This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast. It contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care if you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers. There's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. Po Things. Directed by Yargos Lantimos, based on the 1992 Alistair Gray novel of the same name, is a crazy-ass movie about this lady who gets a brain transplant done by a super cool scientist and then gets real good at fucking. It's so weird, and I think it's my favorite movie. It has a runtime of 2 hours and 22 minutes, has a Rotten Tomato score of 92 with a 79 audience score. It has the second best betting odds, though still a major long shot at plus 1600. It is nominated for 11 Academy Awards. Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actress, Emma Stone, Best Supporting Actor, Mark Ruffalo, Best Actor. I love this movie. Do you? I, I'm i getting more and more closer to loving it. It's, uh, it's more of a lust movie than a love movie. Movie, Pete. That is true, and uh, I, I did really, really enjoy it, and it's insane, and I love insane movies. I love coming away from a movie being like, I have never seen anything like that in my life. This was a coming-of-age movie. You can spell it however you want. You can spell it with a C-O-M. You can spell it with a C-U-M. It is a coming-of-age movie that is unlike anything you've ever seen in your life. It's so fucking weird. There is a real point of, like, you need to get past this hump in order to, like, really just let it take you on the ride. But once you get over that hump, I'm, sh- I'm sure a lot of people will never get over it. But once you get There's over it... a lot it, of humps that you need to get over over in this movie. <laughs> There's a lot of humping. You can't get of- over if you can't get over the <laughs> hump then this is not your movie. If you can get over that initial point of resistance for this movie and just let it take you for a ride, it is one of the most fun rides of the year. I did really 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 like and maybe love this movie. Okay, uh I need to give you credit because that is the first time I've ever heard the cum cum homonym be funny. Good like when me. you said it's a coming of age movie, spell that <laughs> however you want. When people do the come come joke, come, get on, come. Fi- on, on the, the kick, kick drum. drum. Yeah, it's that's Gary. Right. That's right in the house. <laughs> that's Got to right. go talk to Brooke about something. It's called the baseline. I'll be right back. <laughs> uh, that's uh, what is it? that's the breakup. That is the breakup. Okay, and terrifically that will... underrated movie, by the way. So I own that movie on DVD. Yes. It's such a good movie. Chicago sports. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. all tied in there. Fantastic. Uh, okay, this is a must see. For Emma Stone's performance, for how weird a story it is, I'm glad that you love how weird and ridiculous it is. Uh, Shout out Alistair Gray, who wrote the novel. I'm not going to read it. Uh, And just some major laughs. We'll get to it at some point, but this movie uses the R word in a, like, not going for, but getting laughs kind of way, which in 2024, I know the word's back, but, like, in 2024, to be able to do that, shows that there actually is some uh some prowess to what this movie is doing. And it does that it in it's the not first like a cheap, five minutes. Stupid fucking thing. It does you know? it in like the first five minutes and you're like, oh boy, th- this movie is gonna take you on a ride. Uh yeah, the the humor, this is the funniest movie of 2023. Big time. It, and it's it's not even close in my mind. This movie is hilarious, but it's it's so I don't know if I want to shoot my wad too early here. And I know that we're talking about a movie. movie. Exactly. But this movie, I like what this movie does so much because it's like not what Barbie does. Barbie slams you over the head. It is not subtle whatsoever. It has like important messaging in Barbie. Sure. This movie has important messaging and it has really great commentary, but it disguises it because it delivers those messages in fucking hilarious and clever ways. And if you are not paying attention, you can just consume this, like th- this great messaging about like feminism, about like kind of taking ownership of your life, about like love, about just like f- uh, family systems, shit like that. You can take it and you won't even like realize that you're kind of uh, absorbing this messaging because it's packaged in such a fucking funny and entertaining way and it's so well written that i appreciate this movie so much and if you don't want to do that you could say how am i supposed to think with all these titties in my face <laughs> that's right so like really it is for like with it's funny that you bring up barbie because barbie left me asking how stupid is like a lot of different type of people who had various takeaways from the movie of like how stupid are you to be offended by the feminism in this movie? It's like the most 101 thing in the world. You should understand a lot of this stuff by now. And then, like, obviously, like, how stupid are you if you think that, like, a pretty trite message is groundbreaking? A lot, lot of sorts of uh, things. 
this movie, if you want to be stupid, you can love it. Oh, yeah. And if you want to be smart, you can love it. The 79 audience score is perfect for me. I don't want 80 plus percentage of you loving this movie. I want this to be my weird fucked up movie for me and my friends to like. This is, yeah, that's a good point. And I, I also think it goes back to like a lot of people aren't going to get to the hump. Yeah. A lot of people aren't going to get to the hump and get over the hump. Barbie to me is like a movie. It's a comedy. It's a really good comedy that wants to be so much more. And it wants to be smart. And it wants to be taken seriously. This movie is actually very smart and very, I would say, it's smarter than Barbie, but it wants to be taken less seriously. Mm. Uh, this is the uh, second consecutive Yargos Lanthimos uh, Emma Stone film. We last heard from him in 2018 with The Favorite. And, also uh, one of my favorite We both love that, oh, that yeah. movie, right? Oh, yeah. It got them both nominations. I think Emma Stone for Best Supporting Actress, and people thought, nah, that's a little funky uh, that that's where you submitted her. Lanthimos for uh, Best Director. Olivia Coleman won Best Actress, all which was richly actresses. deserved. The, th the, the big three in The Favorite were all nominated. Rachel Weisz? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what a movie. But Lanthimos is a genius. Like The Favorite, this is a movie that is set way back when in Britain. This one is 19th century. The Favorite is 18th century, I believe. But in both cases, feature period inappropriate things at the best moments both of which have massive dance scenes yeah, oh yeah. that are outrageously period inappropriate. <laughs> and if you could say, how many times is he going to go to the well with that? I'll tell you, I hope another. I hope the next film has these two together and it's doing the same thing. I, I, I'll i say this. In this movie, it felt like it was just like all period inappropriate. Like nobody could have ever danced <laughs> well, the, like the, that. The whole movie is inappropriate. <laughs> right. And not like for the sex and everything, but just like, who is making this? Who is doing this? The favorite featured a dance scene in which it was there was good dancing, but it was like this definitely did not exist in this era. This movie featured dancing that you were like, this is would only be approved by Elaine Bennis. This this is horrible dancing. You are right. Yeah, the favorite I want I remember more being like like a like a bad boy records music video. Except you're like, <laughs> yeah. this is supposed to be the Britain in the What's 18th century. And like, even like the, I remember like the camera shot of the, them just like going down the line. It was like Low very, angle. it was very like mo money, mo problems. Mm -hmm. It just didn't make sense for that. This was more, and a lot of it is what does somebody whose brain is a, is very far behind its body for, I mean, spoilers. It's somebody who, uh, tried to kill themselves and received a brain transplant from their uh, unborn baby. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a literal toddler that is existing in this grown person. So if like they're in a situation where people are dancing and they have full control of their limbs, it's probably what they're going to do. Uh, the, probably the, just going to let it all. Like, I don't know what Elaine's excuse was, <laughs> but just a little kicks. Yeah. Uh, y yeah. This, this movie the performances were were unbelievable, specifically by Emma Stone, who had a very difficult job of portraying a an infant's brain inside an adult's body, and all the things that come along with that. Whether it's like the speech, the the movements, the the motor motor functions, like the and the progression that happens throughout the movie of her actually like picking up things and learning how to like just subtly learning how to walk and having agency. Like, right. <laughs> and so all of those things were really, really impressive. Emma Stone obviously crushes it and, you know, deserved nomination here. I do think that my favorite performance in this movie was Mark Ruffalo and Mark Ruffalo, I, I think absolutely needed this performance in this role because, and I, and I think that he's said this himself that like, he had become too uh too boxed in to like the soft spoken sort of depressed middle-aged man and just getting the roles that because that he looks went, like Mark Ruffalo. Right. And like he speaks like Ma Mark Ruffalo. He just has like a very very like soft welcoming uh, aura to him. He's a sweater. Movie, he's a sweater. That's a great way to put it. In this movie, he plays a bit of a dick, a bit of an asshole, a bit of a, a predatory kind of guy and he does it so fucking well 
And as his life comes apart at the scene, seem seems uh, at the hands of Emma Stone's character, character who has no intents or designs on like destroying this guy's life, but just does it by being somebody with any sort of agency. Uh, it's so funny. And Mark Ruffalo just crushes it. And this feels like kind of a uh, letting him letting his his like arms flap to to fly as an actor again. Extremely well put. This is the best Mark Ruffalo performance ever. This is the, this is Hall of Fame Mark Ruffalo. And you are right, it's very different from what Mark Ruffalo does, but he's incredible. Emma Stone is obviously incredible. Willem Dafoe is inc- incredible. Uh what's my guy's name? Uh Yusuf, I forget his first name. Um uh Rami Yusuf okay. who plays like the other guy. Everybody is so good. I want to give a shout out to Margaret Qu- Margaret Qualley, mm-hmm. who in my movie viewing experience, I don't think is a good actor, but also has this very challenging role, obviously to a, a lesser degree than Emma Stone, and I think does it well. So everybody in this movie, I think, is great. The question is, can they win things, and can this movie win things? Mark Ruffalo is going up. Mark Ruffalo, I thought, gave the second best supporting uh performance for actors and he's he's just going up against robert downey jr so yeah, he's not gonna win i don't think this, yeah i don't think he stands much of a chance it's like the buzzsaw of all buzz saws. I, I would say the the biggest the biggest hope that this movie has is probably in like uh well i, I mean outside of emma stone because yeah. i think emma stone's gonna win um well lily gladstone has that's it, the, the, it, i'm just i'm being a an asshole and just flipping that coin which is so lame, but I still haven't picked who it's, I like between the two of those. I know there's a, a decent lo- coin to flip. People are very mad that Emma Stone has momentum and can win, can win best. A- Don't be actress. mad about people that deserve it. Yeah, like, I know that she's a white person, and I know that. Like, I don't know if it's necessarily about she's a white person. I think that like we all saw Killers of the Flower Moon, and we're like, well, nothing's beaten Lily Gladstone, which. Like true, I think that maybe Emma Stone ties Lily Gladstone or barely edges her. Like I don't, th- I think that people saw that and they were like, "We're not going to see it. B- we're probably not going to see a better performance." I'm always happy to be pleasantly surprised. I guarantee she if, killed that. But shit. I guarantee if Emma Stone wins, people are going to complain that the white actress won over Lily Gladstone. But like I, I do think again, like it's a one A one B situation there. Um, the I, the probably the biggest hope here is for makeup. Uh, costume design, set design, or production design, like all of those things were top notch in this movie as well. Can we talk about its chances of actually winning Best Picture? Because I'll tell you what, Oppenheimer's going to win Best Picture. This isn't a fun year for picking things, but, 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 my wheels are turning on potentially poor things being a candidate. It's got the second best betting odds. I would give it the second best chance. I think that. It could possibly, very small chance, pull off a Shape of Water type win. Where when Shape of Water won, we were like, that fucking weird movie? If Poor Things wins, what are people going to say? People that will fucking freak weird out. movie? Yeah. And what did Shape of Water beat? Dunkirk. Christopher Nolan, big ass movie. Look. Not quite to the scale of Oppenheimer. This is a better movie than Shape of Water, but Oppenheimer is such a better movie than Dunkirk. So, But there are those dots historically that you can connect, and it's not like this doesn't have a million nominations, too. It's not like this is this would come out of nowhere. If anything can upset it, I think there's two movies that I at least keep a small eye on other than Oppenheimer. I won't shoot my wad here because we haven't reviewed the other one yet, but this is one of them. It at least kind of has a small, dinky chance. Positives of this movie, Pete? Positives of this movie, uh, again, extremely unique, uh, nothing you've ever seen before. Brilliant story and performances. Negatives, I want to kick Wait, off. Hold on. I, I, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't want to. No, like, you, no, give me all your positives. I thought we were, oh, okay, you want all my positives. All right. Um, unlike anything you've ever seen before, uh, super unique, great costume design, great, great makeup. Willem Dafoe looks so fucked up, but so amazing. Uh, performances off the chain, hilarious. And the uh, the cinematography and CGI were also just lovely. Only real negative, which is like a real negative. Some of these movies I'm going to be like, oh, you can take this as a negative. Uh, this movie is too long 
because it didn't need the uh, Gerard Carmichael stuff. That's fair. I agree with that. That's uh, guy was, well, I, I think that it needed the, like, the messaging, and I think they could have done it in a way that was shorter and maybe packed more of a punch. Yeah, like, it's good that there was a character that reminded the Mark Ruffalo character of like, hey, you don't own this person, but we were very aware as we were watching, and he was very aware that that was all slipping away from Served him. two purposes. Sh- showed uh, Mark Ruffalo that he does not own this person and gave uh, Emma Stone sort of a bit more... Um, br- um, made made her more brave to mm. to do things on her own, but also kind of opened her eyes to the some of the atrocities in the world, and that yeah. she kind of needed that. Yeah. So really, too long with cuttable parts is my only issue with this movie. I gave this on Letterboxd, and I didn't because I don't think I've logged it. Four and a half out of five. I also gave it four and a half out of five stars. What a monster monster movie! We love it. See it.